Down in Australia, they call that a pawpaw. Here in Hawaii, it's a papaya tree. We grow a lot of papaya. We grow a lot of taro. We grow some ornamental plants. But mostly, we grow. Now, a lot of people I see on the internet, they have their siphons inside their grow beds. If I put my siphon inside the grow bed, good luck even being able to find it. Okay? So what we do instead is here I have six beds out here. One here, and there's going in a row of three going back. You can see them back there in the background. They're level with each other. My ground is sloping, but my beds are all exactly level with each other. I then take a 55-gallon drum here, and I have it sitting up. It's wrapped here in, in the uh, silver, you see, to minimize the amount of algae. If I don't do it, I'm going to get algae like you see in here. If you get algae, that can lead to problems. So we noticed this one last week and we wrapped it to knock down the algae. But what I want to share with you this morning is our siphon. I see all kinds of siphons on the internet. I want to share with you. These are our big boys, okay? This is a standard siphon for us. It'll be a three or a four inch piece of thin wall with a cap. Notice we come out the top. We do not come out the sides of a round object of a round cylinder. Come straight out the top. And we go high, and then we put this opening, this uh, shutoff up here at the top. What this does for you is if I don't want the siphon to run, all I have to do is open this. If I open that, I'll go into overflow mode. What's overflow mode? Well, if those are my gardens out there, and I have this 55-gallon drum hooked, as you see, in those two 3-inch, this does three gardens, this one over here does three gardens, and it comes into here. This pipe here is my overflow pipe. The height of this pipe sets the height of the garden. Like the standard standpipe when you guys do a, a siphon you know, in your side. Now when it comes up to here, as you see there, if that pipe is about here, I'm level with there. So I'm going to flood all six of these gardens at one time. They're 100 gallon containers. And so with 100 gallons of water with the rock, it's basically about 50 gallons in each one flushing each time they flush. I put in 50 gallons an hour to each one, so I have 300 gallons an hour coming into this system. When I come to here, when the water comes down to there, you have your straight down tube. We do something unique, is we take our siphon, and notice the air brake on this. It comes out the top, that's using a bulkhead fitting, goes up to my release, if I want to release, but notice the height from the black bulkhead fitting to there. We run these with a clear piece of pipe one time to see what the suction is for this system. Here's the point, folks. When this runs, I do not want to see water coming up over here. Now notice I used a three-quarter inch fitting here. I come up to here to here, but then I went to one inch. That's because I want a one-inch pipe going to the bottom. When this guy breaks, I want the water in this pipe. It'll be sucked up above this water level because of the vacuum. I want it to drop out. If you do too narrow, if you do those little 3 8 tube or quarter inch tube or half inch tube, it's just simply you get problems by it not breaking. If you upgrade, go to a one inch, you see when the water gets down there, that baby is going to break. Okay? So we're coming up here to a flush mode. Now I'm going to put this on. I'm going to leave it in the open position so it won't start until I'm ready just for the purpose of this film. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to show you something unique you've probably never seen before underneath here. And that is, we come down to a T-fitting. The T-fitting comes out, I do 245s, and I have an air vent. What this does, folks, is the water's going to fall down the tube, hit the T, it always has water, the bubbles are going to come out, they're going to come up here, and the bubbles are going to let the air release up to here. If I pull this guy off, just for you to see, now you'll notice there's a small trickle of water. I wanted to show you that. That's because I have drilled a quarter inch hole down toward the bottom of that two inch pipe. Why? If I have a power failure, I want these gardens to drain. I don't want them to sit with water all night long. So it may take an hour for them to drain down through that hole, but that small hole, that trickle of water, will not influence the operation of this system running. Now when this system runs, notice if I do the 245s and I vent this, after this I own it. 
Then I go to three inch pipe and the three inch pipe, that's gonna take off and go across my garden all the way down to the sump tank where we have one pump in this whole garden that sends the water back up to my fish tanks, okay? So you can see the high tide mark here. That's as high as the water can get in here is there, okay? Corresponding to that standpipe. Okie dokie. So we're going to let this guy fill up. Now, notice my property is sloping. Up here at the top of the hill, notice you only got like one or one and a half brick. Over here, you're two brick. Over here, you're two and a half bricks, okay? But the level of my gardens are all level. By doing that, I can gang up six to ten of these gardens and hook them to one 55-gallon drum there whose standpipe is set to set the level. And you see they're about 18 inches deep. So if my air brake is 18 inches deep, bingo, I got it. The drums are three foot tall. So if I do that, that gives me a, quite an operation range. All I got to do is have this drum be higher than that garden. So if any water's coming out, it's coming out there, not out of here. And the bottom of it, the nature of 55 gallon drums, they're three foot tall about. And then this is only about a foot and a half. I have quite an operational range there that I can set on. Guys, once you do a remote siphon, it will change your world. Now this little green thing up here on the top. If I come out here and I want to throw this garden into an overflow mode, I need only to open this guy up. And then the water will fill to the standpipe and I'll overflow. If I want to run this on an electrical timer, I need only to turn this. If I come out here and this guy's overflowing and I want to drag this down to zero, not a problem, okay? I can just flush it in a heartbeat. I can show you some of the other drums we do over here. This drum is up three bricks high. Why is it three bricks high? Because it controls a garden uphill of me, up there. So it's controlling those gardens there, their level with each other. I come down the hill. I have to raise the tank. This one's going to go off. This is duckweed in here. When this one goes off, it's quite something else to see. Fact is, you're a lucky day. It's going off now. Now this duckweed, we've all been taught to grow it in nice, calm environment, right? <laughs> Forget that. We grow it in extremely turbulent environment. It chokes up here like this. When it comes down here, guys, it will mat up. I will have a carpet of duckweed, okay? When I say a carpet, we will come down here and we will be approaching, we took out yesterday, a half inch deep out here. Yeah. So this duckweed is one third of my fish feed. But do you see this guy running here? This is running off a siphon, just like that siphon we saw over there. Notice this one comes out the top. I don't have my little garden hose fitting on this one. But watch this. I'm going down. I'm going to lift this guy up. Here he comes. Whoop. There's the air brake. So when the air came up to here, she broke and she went down. Notice the slot here. Notice I've gotten over the design flaw. We used to always come out the bottom of the drum. Unnecessary. I can come right out the side. As long as that side... You're below the operating depth of the air. In other words, I'm going to drain this drum down to about here. It doesn't matter if that's coming out the bottom or it's coming out the side. Doesn't make any difference at all. If I want to drain this thing down in a heartbeat, I can open up a three inch valve over here. And I can take this guy down in a heartbeat. I just twirl it over toward the bed and I dump it down. But uh, it's phenomenal what you can grow in a system like that and the voluptuousness of your plants. For you guys that are thinking about going electrical, is something dependable? I'll share with you. I've been an electrician since 1974 here in Hawaii. I've made a living keeping electrical things running. Good luck with that. It's uh, guys like me make a living keep, keeping t toys going. This has no moving parts. They've been running for years. We'll have little or no problems at all. Anyway, thought I'd share that.